how can Ravens right all of their wrongs that they committed against the Dolphins this week? And not even just this week, but moving forward. We have a very special jam-packed episode of questions from subs, and we're going to talk about everything. We got a lot of questions from a lot of people, so y'all sit back, relax, uh, and try to enjoy yourselves as best you can. This will be sort of like a therapy session for a lot of Ravens fans. But let's get it started. First question came from Simeon. He said, is it a good thing we lost to the Dolphins? Me, from jump, I never feel like a loss is good. But uh, to take the positive out of the negative, better that you lose now than later. I mean, you don't ever want to lose at all. But better be now than later because you have an opportunity to sort of correct some things. Because, hey, come later on in the season, come especially if Ravens make the playoffs, which, I mean, I expect them to still. This loss doesn't change that. Um, and this loss doesn't even change my overall view of them. Like somebody, one of my guys hit me up on Instagram. is like, oh, does this loss change uh, how you feel about the Ravens and, and your expectations for them overall this season? I said, no, it doesn't. Um, but... This loss is it's better that it happened now uh, rather than it happened in the playoffs because you lose in the playoffs, <laughs> you, you at the crib for the rest of the year. But anyway, um, Simeon said, hey, Graven, hope you and the family are good. Just wanted to get your thoughts on the identity of our beloved Baltimore Ravens going forward after that awful fourth quarter defensive collapse on Sunday. I don't think they have the identity yet. I think it's way too early to, to, to know what the identity is. They don't even know it. But anyway, he said, I, I know it's too early in the season to really tell how this team is going to be. But to me, with our run game struggling in both games so far and our defense letting us down against Miami, could this be a catalyst to a much needed shift in philosophy to prioritizing our passing game and relying on Lamar and our offense to win games, not our run game or defense? So far, we've stuck with what worked, despite most fans knowing Lamar had such potential in the past game. But if this season we struggle to run the ball and give up a lot of points in most games, Lamar leading us to high-scoring victories through necessity could make the front office sit up and take notice and hopefully decide to join most of the rest of the league in creating a pass-first offense. I love Lamar, but he won't be here much longer unless we pay him what he wants. And Ravens should already have the right offer for him, just waiting uh, for the season to finish so he can stay true to his word and sign once it's over. P.S. If Brady does truly retire at the end of the season, we all know he loves rings and loves Lamar. Do you think he could be persuaded to become Ravens QB coach if the spot opens up? Never. I don't ever see that happening. Tom Brady being a quarterback coach for the Ravens? Nah. Uh, and he said he could perfect Lamar's game and win himself some more rings in the process. If he sees it uh, as his best shot at doing, uh, doing so, I could see him taking a job. Love to you and the family. Appreciate it, Simeon. Um, no. I... Uh, he said for, for Brady to sign up to be Lamar's QB coach for the Ravens. I mean, Ravens would have to keep Lamar first. But anyway, um, as far as the philosophy, uh, yeah, they should have been on this. They, they, they should have been on this with emphasizing the passing game a lot more. And the thing is, it's not like with, with, the, with the passing game, like the defense, oh, they're going to be bad every single game. No, no. Um, I, I think Marlon Humphrey, his value to the Ravens just went up a lot. It just went up a lot. Because when Marlon Humphrey was off the field, that's when Dolphins went crazy. Coincidence? Hey, I don't know. But when he was on the field, Dolphins wasn't doing much of anything. Marlon Humphrey left, Dolphins went off. They went off. And that's smart of the Dolphins to take advantage of one of the Ravens' best corners being out of the game. But they certainly took all of the advantage. It was like Marlon Humphrey went out and then everything went out the window. So, um... I'm not like looking at the rest of the season like, oh man, I, I should expect or we should expect the Ravens defense to give up 40 something points every game. No, that, that shouldn't be an expectation. Last game, Marlon Humphrey was hurting. Obviously, couldn't even play the whole game. Marcus Peters is on the pinch, pitch count. So, your, your two best corners, they weren't fully available. So, I, we got to look at context with everything. And I don't think that this should just change the way that uh, our expectations for the defense moving forward. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Dolphins loss was an anomaly. Next question came from Mars. It said, Angraven, hope you're doing well. 
I want to quell some fears Ravens fans have been expressing online since Tua stomped our defense. So, as we all know, Marlon Humphrey was playing through a groin injury, right? Harbaugh also admitted Marcus Peters was on a pitch count. Brandon Stevens was out, and we just lost Kyle Fuller last week for the season. So, during the second half of the game, we had Pepe Williams, Jalen Armand Davis, Kyle Hamilton all on the field at the same time alongside Daryl Worley. Oh, oh, he played? I, I didn't know that he played. Uh, but anyway, where did we see this amount of injury in the secondary come back to bite us? When Burrow put 500 yards up on us last season. Marlon is healing up. He'll likely be limited in practice this week. Marcus seemed like he was just shaking the rust off and enjoyed being back out there. You think Brandon Stevens is going to be all right come Sunday against New England, so we we'll immediately back up three cornerbacks. True. Uh, this isn't a play calling issue. It's a play execution issue with players and hardball both citing miscommunication as the number one explanation for blown coverages. Uh, that's understandable when you have three rookies trying to call it uh, Gesicki, Wado, and Tyreek Hill. Tua underthrew Tyreek on one of those TDs. If even just that one TD never happened, we win. Hey, but it did. It did. So anyway, uh, if Humphrey and Peters are on the field for that play, we win. Uh, this loss was a fluke, everyone. What are you thinking, Graven? Do you agree, honestly, thinking angry Lamar, who is putting up amazing passing numbers so far in a defense that can only get healthier, will play the lot with the largest chip on their shoulder going forward? This is the loss to motivate everyone, and so long as we patch up on outside linebacker, get well, Stephen Means. We should be good to go on a tear. Now, uh, the part that I disagree with, I, I agree with most of what you said, except uh, this isn't a play calling issue. It's a play execution issue. Um, I think it's a bit of both. Uh, obviously, because... Yeah, they, they just left Tyreek Hill wide open. And uh, Jalen Lamar Davis, he he just, the route was a simple route by uh, the, the game-winning one. A simple route by Jalen Waddle. And Jalen Waddle just made the play. Jalen Alma Davis didn't. Um, but as far as that last play, the, the, uh, the Tyreek Hill one, that play, that's like, that's, that's inexcusable, especially from the coaches. Like for, for rookies, and like you mentioned, there's a lot of rookies out there. Pepe, Jalen, Kyle. Yeah, I get that. They're young. They're inexperienced. This Dolphins job to take advantage of them. So shout out to the Dolphins for being smart. But that's up to coaching to recognize, like, hold up. This, this dude's one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek. Okay, time out, time out. But they didn't. You called it during my last question. Next question came from my guy, Elijah. He said, Engraven, hope you and the family are good in good health. I also hope your blood pressure is back under control after Sunday's game against the Dolphins. You know what? They didn't really, the game didn't really get my blood pressure going crazy like that. It was just like one of those things where, all right, Ravens, they built up this big lead and I was calm, but then the Dolphins, like, they kept creeping back. And I was like, man, we, it, it ain't over. And then I remember it's funny because during the game, we were having a conversation um, about like, oh man, could the, could the Ravens sit Lamar? And I was like, ah, no, it's because it was a 14 point game. And I was like, oh, if the Ravens score again, uh, then they could sit Lamar. But they never scored again, but anyway. Um, he said, you definitely called it in my last question from subs about Harbaugh's fourth down calls. It didn't take long before last year's decision-making <laughs> reared his ugly head. I believe that us Ravens fans are accepting of the aggressive play calls and risk-taking because of who we have at the helm for now. Oh, I like how he put for now. Uh, but I don't think the Ravens coaching staff realized that this isn't the Ravens from the 19 and 20 seasons. We don't have the same offensive line, nor do we have the lineup of healthy running backs that we did uh, in 2019 and 2020. All of our big chunk running plays, uh, not from Lamar, have been to the outside. Uh, our defense isn't the same as it once was during our glory years. Our front may be solid, but it's old and fatigue will show sooner uh, than it would if we were younger. I didn't really have a question, more of a rant and observations on what we need to do to improve our chances this year. Um... Yeah, again, with the, with the fourth down calls, like, like I said, I, I ain't have any problems with the fourth down calls. I can understand how people did, though. Uh, I can understand how people be like, hey, take your points. But I just, I don't think it would, I mean, it contributed, but I don't feel like in this game, it was the fourth down calls that caused the loss. I just feel like it, it was the defense giving up everything. Like Ravens offense put up uh, 31 points. The offense put up 31 points. Um, then the special teams, or unless you want to give the, the, the special teams to, uh, the three points to, to the special teams too, then the offense put up 28, the special teams put up 10, uh, because Devin Duvernay with a kick return, then Justin Tucker with the field goal. Um, that should be, <laughs> should be plenty enough points to, to win the game. But again, yeah, Raven just got to make some small little fixes here and there. 
uh, so, they don't, so they don't end up uh, having to sit out for the rest of the season come crunch time. Next question came from my guy Joel. He said, I apologize. You were right. Mm. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone in the team. Keep it clean. I want to apologize to everyone who said that the Ravens, specifically Harbaugh, DaCosta, and Bashadi, have a philosophy that is holding us back. I want to apologize to you all because you have been saying this for a while and I was stubborn. Uh, I work for PFF, so obviously I am a numbers guy. Um, for the first time yesterday, I tuned into the live stream and shout out to everyone in the live stream. Appreciate you. Um, and the Ravens are one of, if not the most analytically driven teams in the NFL. Each fourth down they went for was the correct call analytically, but clearly it was not the correct call because it did not work out. As I watched the game with you all, I realized the numbers uh, just tell a story of what happened. And sure, they can help predict some outcomes, but they are not the end all be all. I agree with that part. I agree. Because uh, I feel like like if you just in football, if you just look at numbers, numbers, numbers and that's it. And then you're like, all right, da -da 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 -da. it's like you could be so focused on those numbers, you can get lost in the uh, in the game. But anyway, uh, analytics don't account for a fumble at the one yard line or a bad play caller who calls the same play every fourth and one or the defense having dogs who also want to win. Even with a 21 point fourth quarter lead, I learned that you guys had an uneasy feeling about the game. And in my mind, I was like, there is a 98 percent chance they win this game. I don't understand why y'all are tripping. In the analytics world, we claim that rushers don't matter, and if you have a good secondary, that is all that matters. And obviously, every other Ravens except me uh, did not agree with that, and y'all are correct. Y'all said Giro is not a great running game coordinator. It's just that the quarterbacks carried that run game, and again, y'all were right. Y'all said Lamar can throw with the best of them, and obviously, again, y'all were right. I know this is long, but I want to let you all know it doesn't matter what some guy at PFF tells you about some analytics or draft or coach. Fans know way more about the game than some of these gurus. And he put it in quotation marks. Uh, we know our team better than anyone, and we know what our eyes are telling us. Shout out to everyone on the team. Keep it clean, and I apologize to everyone. Well, that was deep. And shout out to you for having a job at PFF. That's cool, man. Um, but I, 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 did, I do appreciate that. Um, I, I appreciate you acknowledging uh, fans, because a lot of people like to discredit fans just because fans are fans, and fans are not professionals. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, if, if you know so much, then well, why are you not in the league? If you know so much, why are you not working for the team? If you know so much, why are you not working for the NFL? So I, I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's what it's about, man. Because th this is why, and, and again, I know with, with media guys, they got to cover so many different teams and whatnot. So they may have a vague, they may have vague info on teams specifically. So they just look at a bunch of numbers. So with them looking at a bunch of numbers, that doesn't allow them to take the eye test, like you mentioned, when they talk about or analyze or criticize different teams. Um, so it's, it's so important that, because stats are not everything. Stats are part of it. Stats show what technically happened, but it's important that with your eyes, you really, like, you really see. Um, like a good example of that, the Cardinals Raiders game. Um, we see, oh, the, the Cardinals, they got, they converted a two-point conversion. Kyler Murray ran it in for, what, two-yard play, five-yard run, whatever it was, however long it was. I forget how far the two-point conversion is away from the end zone. Um, and that's what you see on a stat sheet. But if you actually look at that actual two-point conversion, this dude was running around with the ball for like 20 seconds, and he did the impossible. So the, the numbers will tell you, hey, yeah, Kyler Murray ran it in, two-point conversion. All right, cool, good job. But when you actually look at it, it's like, whoa, he actually got that two-point conversion? That's crazy. The Baltimore Falcons. Next question came from my guy, Nicholas. He said, I ain't great, and I hope all is well with you and the fam. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to make the live streams. They always add a fun addition to the game. I appreciate that, man. It, and it's all good, man. Uh, he said, uh, I'm sure by the time you get to this question, the subject will have already been covered. But it's honestly the elephant in the room. Honestly, I think 38 points means the offense did their job. Could we have played better uh, or on our third and fourth downs? Of course. Should we have had extended drives to tie out the defense? Yes, but points are points. And 30-plus against a playoff caliber team is all we should expect. Giving up 28 in the fourth is obviously unacceptable. Our zone coverage was Swiss cheese. If the quarterback had time and the wide receivers are good, they're going to find the holes. Our man coverage was okay at times, but fast or not, Arma Davis is a rookie. Tyreek and Waddle are big names to cover And you need that safety help over the top Which has some communication issues Peters and Humphreys didn't look 100 Especially when they got tied in the fourth Not to mention when you can only afford to rush four They need to be fresh and get pressure What was your takeaway from this loss? I hate to say it but coaching was a question at times Yeah I agree with that it was 
It was. Uh, QB power is becoming predictable on fourth and short. Yes, 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 yes. Um, it's hey Ravens. It's okay to let Lamar throw the ball on fourth down. It it, it really is. It really is. I understand. You know who Lamar is, and you know he's 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 such a great runner of the football. But he can throw. And it's so it's okay not to be predictable off what that, my friends. It's okay. It really is, man. But anyway. Um he said uh QB power is becoming predictable on fourth and short, and sometimes we should have just punted. Uh if Giro is the best run game coordinator in the league, why is our run game non existent? Mm. I also think our defensive depth is exciting and has potential, but is young and inexperienced. Uh, I think we need to sign a trade for a solid number three corner to eventually take over for Peters. Oh, you oh, you talking you talking business now. You talking the business side now, cause that's ooh, that's gonna be something, cause it's uh, yeah, that's, yeah, we gonna see. But anyway, um, he said, and we need to get an edge rusher. Even if Bowser and Ajabo come back, we shouldn't rush them in. Uh, we could use a vet like JPP or Robert Quinn coming in on third down, or or t to relieve Houston on long drives, who play well but look tired quickly. But who knows? Our roster is talented. Maybe we were just caught sleeping after building the lead. Sorry for the long question. Didn't mean to write a novel in his hallway. Keep up the good work. Oh, no, Nicholas. It, it's all good. <laughs> Ain't heard from Rob's Backyard Barbecue in a long time. See, losses like that, they'll bring people back. Rob, my guy said, hello, and straightforward. Is it safe to say the Ravens' philosophy has not changed? Um, No, I, I, I don't think it's safe to say that. I think they just need to accept what it should be now. Um, the run game is not uh, what you hoped it would be so far, uh, but the pass game is looking good. Uh, Lamar, he said it himself. Hey, these ain't the same old Ravens. Shout out to Eric Weather. This is not the same old Ravens. These are not the old Ravens. These are the new Ravens. So Ravens need to accept it, man, and just get with it. And th these new Ravens on offense, they were doing their thing. Yeah, in the fourth quarter, they stopped. They just stopped. They were like, okay, we, 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 we good for now. Um, some was a play calling. Some was execution. But they just stopped in the fourth quarter. So, but it's, they, they did enough, though. They did enough to win. Um, so, it's, it's just a little defense, some defensive hiccups. Uh, they just need to drink a little bit of water. Uh, again, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey, they'll be healthy soon. So, I just, I, I don't want everybody to sort of overreact to the loss. Um, because context is important, um, but again, there were some blunders on there, especially from coaching side with the again the wide open people, that th that just can't happen. That can't happen. Um, that those are rookie coaching mistakes because they're literally rookie mistakes too. Because those, those are rookies out there. So the rookies are going to make rookie mistakes, but we don't have first-year head coaches. We don't have first-year defensive. Well, we got a first-year defensive coach, so that's a little different. But Hobbs, that, that's rookie stuff, man. And we know he's not a rookie. He's better than what he showed on Sunday. So let's see better. I finally understand you. Next question came from my guy, Steven. He said, hey, what's up, Engraven? My mind has been boggling since this mind-boggling loss to the Miami Dolphins. Definitely a hard pill to swallow. Not really a question, but a rant. First off, I want to let you know I'm finally on the move on from John Harbaugh train. Sorry, it took a while, but I fell in love uh, some, with some of uh, John Harbaugh's leadership. Uh, and ability to have us in the hunt every year had to fight hard but we were in the hunt but after watching yesterday's game it was just so obvious uh, of Harbaugh's ineffectiveness in a 60-minute football game setting week two against the Miami team that destroyed us last year in their crib oh they sure did uh, the biggest pet peeve for him is his timeout management some games we use our timeouts at the worst time and don't have them when we absolutely need them and other times like yesterday for example we save timeouts at the end of the first half like they carry over <laughs> Like they, like they carry over to the second half. Then in the second half, save all timeouts while my Miami has all the momentum of a game. We were leading the entire game uh, unheard of. Then, worst of all, his timeout management saved us a whopping 14 seconds to score with two timeouts. Impossible. No, but clearly Harbaugh is not a defensive coach to adjust anything. And he's definitely not an offensive guru, so why would you save two timeouts thinking you could get the ball in the end zone after having only scored three points in the fourth? Make me Makes me feel like we should have went for it after the offside penalty on Justin Tucker's kick. Maybe just wishful thinking, though. Um, with that, with, uh, 
when with the offensive coaching and the defensive coaching. No, Harbaugh's not either one of those things. Um, he obviously takes part in the game plan and stuff. Uh, but a lot of times, Harbaugh just let, lets his guys do what they do. He, he usually doesn't really micromanage them like that. Uh, if he hires an offensive coordinator, he's like, hey, you the offensive coordinator, you got it. Uh, if he hires a defensive coordinator, he's like, hey, you the defensive coordinator, you got it. His job is to oversee all that stuff, but he really doesn't dip his hand in what they're doing. Um, but anyway, he said, without Lamar doing something magical, uh, I'm off on John Harbaugh just with like a young coach that gets excited about getting playmakers the ball. <clears throat> and maybe I could live with these boneheaded decisions from a young coach, he put that in all caps, who hasn't been doing this for 15 plus years. Same for Greg Roman, with the most conventional play calls I've ever seen with a team running back. This is the NFL. So what if you were up 35-14 going into the fourth? Keep your foot on the neck no matter how many points go on the board. Honestly, with Lamar being as proficient, calm, and game-controlling as he has become, I don't see a need for Giro, especially with the run game looking pathetic for the second straight year. Did Lamar cover up for a weak QB run-based offense that Giro has? With Lamar not doing as many design runs, it seems more and more likely. Speaking of likely, oh, look what you did there. Uh, I feel like they are not even using likely in the same way they did in the preseason. But, hey, maybe that's wishful thinking as well. What do I know after Bates' 75-yard touchdown at the beginning of the second quarter? He caught one pass for eight yards. Ooh. You have to create plays to get your playmakers the football. And if four-yard outs, which one late was almost pick six. Ooh, yeah, that, ooh, that, was, that was scary. I'm so glad Xavier Howard dropped that. Uh, if that was your only idea of getting Bateman the ball in space, it'll continue to be this way. Lastly, Mike McDonald, how? That was worse than Wink grabbing folks off the street. This guy put young players in the worst spots with nothing but speed to destroy their confidence. Hashtag speed killed. Woo. Our boy Steven wasn't playing, man. Um, but, yeah, I feel like with, with yesterday's game, I don't even feel like it got to be like fire this, fire that. But it, it does put people on notice, and it should put people on notice. Um, people got to fix stuff. It, it, people need to be accountable they need to be accountable so while i don't feel like yesterday's game was like all right fire this guy fire that guy fire that guy fire that guy um they just need to right their wrongs they got 15 more games to do it let's hope that they do next question came from my guy g star he said omg these ravens can we use this as a reason why you don't just overpay for defenses and don't get more weapons on offense with how the defense was playing today other than certain players we were just giving up free plays and gravy can you please tell me your thoughts on who is to blame for this collapse of the defense um both uh health health and coaching again hump and peters they were out a lot especially in the fourth quarter uh and then coaching just they they didn't recognize what was going on like right in front of their eyes um and that's important like as as the coaches you're the leaders you're the people that put the young players and old players too in positions to hopefully make them have success um but if you're recognizing that they're not having success and what and what they're being coached on, you got to change something. You got to fix something. My thoughts on the Ravens Dolphins game. Next question came from your mind. He said, "Ain't Raven, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to share my thoughts on what actually happened during the game. It's a controversial opinion, but I really think offense instead of the defense lost us the game. I think Mike McDonald had to make a decision in the fourth quarter to whether whether or not to keep our two best cornerbacks." Uh, where one was having uh, his first game after injury and the other having a groin injury during this week. Each of them just had one training day leading up to the game. So I kind of get why the coaching staff wanted to put the rookies on and not risk losing the top corners for the year. Again, at this point, you're up 21 points with one quarter left to play. I, I, I see what you're saying there. It's like, hey, uh, if my guys, one of my guys just came back, other one dealing with the groin injury, we up big, all right, cool. Let me let these guys rest, but let's keep going. I believe the defensive side of the ball put their trust on the offense and specifically the offensive coordinator. And what did G the Giro do? Uh, he ran cheap run concepts with a running back room that is at most times not capable of having a run more than five yards. Most of our fourth quarter drives were short and we punted the ball very quickly. Not to mention the fourth and ones that we could have converted into field goals but decided not to. I think the loss is all on Greg Roman and John Harbaugh. Moving on from the game, I believe the current offensive personnel is really good for a pass-heavy offense. Giro just isn't the guy to run it. What do you think? Um, and it's crazy that it's, it's crazy that this is even a conversation right now. <laughs> he said, "Hey, hey, uh, I think the offensive personnel is really good for a pass-heavy offense. Giro just isn't the guy to run it um, because, yeah, they they obviously can pass the ball, they can pass it well, uh, but this is something that we've known for a long time now. 
Uh, but it seems like the Ravens are just like sort of catching up a little bit. But it's all good. Um, you were saying that you feel like the the loss is on the offense. The loss is on Giro. Um, they the offense definitely contributed to the loss, but I, I disagree with them being the reason for the loss. Uh, even with Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey being out, um, no, nah, I just no. I, I I do agree the part about it being on Harbaugh and coaching and stuff. I, I disagree with it about it being on Giro uh, in the offense. Um, and as far as moving on from uh, Giro or saying Giro isn't the guy for it, um, let's see what happens when I don't know when Ronnie Stanley's coming back. I would think it would be this week, but hey, who knows? Um, let's see what happens when JK comes back. Uh, let, 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 let's just see. Um, and, and let's just really see over these next two weeks. I, I say we revisit all of this, uh, after the Bills game, cause that way we'll have four games to really know a lot more about who the Ravens identity is, what they can do, what they can't do, where they really struggle at, what they do well and all that stuff. So I will say, let's revisit this in a couple of weeks. Next question came from coach white. He said, Hey, nobody is saying this, but as a defensive coordinator myself, the best or worst depends on what side you're looking at. When you have a fullback instead of an extra wide receiver, you bring in two extra bodies alone. Worse than that, you have two tight ends and a fullback bringing in an extra defender. It'll be hard to block eight or nine, uh, an eight or nine man front. Until they officially get rid of the tight end and run spread, the run will suffer no matter who's back there. Now you might ask what the difference is with the spread. Easy. You take the linebackers and safeties out the box, uh, leaving just the mic backer to defend the run on the read option. Oh, because it's, it's, it's spread out a bit more and you got more receiving options. Okay. Um, so that puts more pressure on that defense with the pass. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, he said, uh, da -da -da -da. now you'll have lane. Those were the plays that Justice Hill had. The running back ran against an eight or nine man front. Now the they now they call QB run. I blame Giro. Not for the calls because he don't know his players like I like I or we do. LJ two years ago, those runs would have been an easy touchdown in the first down. Now Lamar is not rambling his body through those hits anymore. And I don't blame him. He's a QB. Now QB run on a spread with less traffic, cool, but don't call those power runs anymore because Lamar will and should sacrifice his body because no other QB will be called to do that. Or oh, I think he meant Lamar shouldn't sacrifice his body. Um, or the other QBs that are worth uh, over 200 mil, they ain't doing that. So, yeah, I appreciate the breakdown, Coach White. Um, and, yeah, hey, that, 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 makes, a, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, that, that fourth down, it was stacked, man. It was stacked. Uh, it was so congested too, and with it being congested, and they them having Lamar run right up the gut, it's like the offensive line has been they've been bad at run blocking these past two games. And as a coach, you got to recognize that. So, like you mentioned, if they were to run in, in more of a spread offense, then yeah, that that will create more lanes and just really spread the defense out that much more. Oh, and this other question also came from Coach White. He said the blown coverage, everybody blaming Hamilton for me was the DC's fault. I, I agree. Uh, but anyway, he said everybody's blaming Hamilton, but nobody knows what coverage they were in. 95% of the time, the DB on the single wide receiver has a deep third because all the wide receivers uh, on the other, are on the other side. Now, with that said, the sidelines saw that both safeties were on the other side of the formation. Mike McDonald should have recognized they were not in the right coverage. Yes. Yes. That's what I've been saying, too. The coaching staff should have recognized that. They should have seen that. And being like, oh, whoa, 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 time out, time out. We can't have this happen. Next question came from our boy Raymond L. And, and appreciate you being a patron, my friend. He said, hey, Graven, first of all, hope you and the family are doing well. Oh, we doing good. Appreciate it. I watched the game on Sunday and was feeling good. How things were going in the first half and then in the second half, boom. Our defense could not stop them. And uh, what can we do on defense to get back on track? I think it just really starts with getting healthier. Getting healthier because once you get healthier, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, those guys should be out there more. Um, and they obviously got the experience. They'll know a lot better where to be uh, and even how to get guys lined up. I think a lot is on Chuck Clark, too. Chuck Clark is supposed to be the one who's getting guys lined up. He's supposed to be the one that's uh, relaying the information, calling the plays and stuff, getting everybody set. So a lot of that is on him, too. But then 
really ultimately it's up to the coaching. Coaching got to be uh, the main ones to, to recognize what's going on. Next question came from my guy, DJ Vertex. He said, hello, I just started watching the show on the regular this year. I enjoyed the show and your intake on the Ravens. Appreciate that, DJ. Uh, how many times have you seen the Ravens team blow a three-touchdown lead? I can't remember. I don't know, man. That's a great question. I just... Have they ever? I'm sure they've done it before, maybe, but I I I can't recall off the top of my head, man. Um, that was just it's just crazy. It was it was historically crazy. Next question came from my guy Eugene. He said, "What's good, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing good. I got some thoughts about what just happened in the Dolphins game. Number one, EDC needs to bring in more pass rush help. We can't have a way in Houston out there the whole time. Those boys look gassed. So we look in to, we look to bring in JPP or someone like that to uh, have him help after the D line looked great in the Week One matchup." Yeah, and part of that is Travis Jones, too, but you need some uh, exterior pass rush help, too, because, yeah, them boys are going to be gassed. Number two, Greg Roman showed me some improvement on his play calling in the first half, but second half was kind of suspect to me. Passing game looked great, but can't I can see uh, that they were badly missing a running game. Yes, that's true. That's why it's important. Hey, running game ain't working. Keep, keep going to what is working. And don't be like, all right, yeah, we did the passing game. We showed that it worked, but now let's just rely heavily on a running game. Yeah, it was later on in the game and you were up, but if it wasn't working, you got to adjust. You got to make adjustments. And, yeah, don't, don't get too conservative. Anyway, Ravens are known to be a running team, and they could have really chewed the clock late in the fourth and then kicked uh, the field goal maybe with um, leaving them with maybe 30 or 40 seconds on the clock. Number three, uh, here we go again with the analytics, LOL. I believe uh, with we left – 10 to 13 points on the field from going for it on fourth down. Once at the goal line, uh, either seven or three points and got stopped twice on Lamar keepers. Man, if you're going for it on fourth down, they have to do something different. That part right there. That part right there. It feels like with their fourth down, they got their sort of bread and butter play. That they go, all right, Lamar going to keep it. And it's like what's crazy about it is that everybody knows Lamar is going to keep it. Everybody expects Lamar to keep it. But then sometimes some of us are thinking, like me, myself, like, oh, yeah, no, nah, they ain't going to have Lamar keep it. Not this time, not again. But they have Lamar keep it. So everybody knows what's coming. Everybody expects what's coming to, to happen. And then when it still happens, it's like, oh, okay. It, it, they actually really still did it. Um, so, yeah. And he said, uh, man, uh, oh, yeah, if you're going to go for it on fourth, you got to do something different. Uh, the whole globe. No, he said, no, the whole universe knew Lamar would keep the ball. Sorry for the long post, but we can't keep doing the same old thing. And the last question on this episode came from my boy KD. He said, hello, Engraven. I hope you and your family and the whole Team Keep It Clean community are doing well. Hope yesterday's loss didn't leave too sour of a taste. We still got the whole season ahead of us. That's true. And a long season at that. Now, uh, to the take I had in mind, I was having a discussion with my best friend about our Superman quarterback after the game. He asked for my opinion on Lamar and his whole contract situation, and I told him it's not all about the money. Here's my thoughts that I love your opinion on. Yes, Lamar is holding out for a better deal, and rightfully so, because the price keeps going up annually. Dude deserves every penny. Even though money is big, I think there's more to it. When Lamar got drafted, what did he tell Dion on the stage? They're going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Year after year, we've watched this man continuously work on his craft. Every offseason, you see and hear him going to work and improving his game. We're constantly seeing him grow and progress. Yes, the money is big, but to Lamar Jackson, so is winning. If it was just about the money, he would have held out. The dude is a megastar, and he just strolls around in a Toyota Corolla hatchback. Money is not the only factor. Lamar is simply looking at the supporting cast around him to, to determine if he should stay or not. Is Harbaugh's mismanagement of games going to hinder his goals of winning? Is Greg Roaming holding him back from maximizing his full potential as a weapon? I think not just Greg Roman, but the whole philosophy is. But anyway, another conversation for another time. Uh, is he being put in the best scenarios to ensure that he'll win? Oof. In the end, I think Lamar will tell Eric DaCosta and Steve B. It's either him or Giro, maybe even Harbaugh. Uh, they'll let him walk, and it'll be the worst mistake this franchise will ever make. I don't think they would ever let Lamar just walk. I think they would trade him. Um, they, they, they would never just let him walk. Because um, Ravens are going to they're gonna try to make the most of the situation for them. Uh, if, if it happens where the two sides just can't come to an agreement and they know that they're not going to budge and Lamar's not going to budge, they're going to make the most out of the situation for them. Um, so I, I would I would see the Ravens them trading him, uh, not letting him walk though, um, and I think they would trade him to the team in the NFC, um, and 
that would be that. And they would try to recoup and get as many draft picks and all that for him and whatnot. Um, and, yeah, I think it would be a terrible decision if that happens. Hopefully it doesn't, but it's business, so we'll see. Right, anyway, he said, Lamar is humble. He leads by great example. He's actively helping the community. He plays his heart out. He wins. He brings in revenue. And he stays out of the massage parlors. <laughs> He's a real deal, and the Baltimore Ravens would be fools to let him go. Sorry for the long take, and stay blessed. Man, um, yeah, man, you made some great points. And, yeah, Lamar, I think it, it is definitely about money, but it doesn't stop uh, at him getting paid. It's, uh, obviously, like you mentioned, uh, it's more than that. Um, so with that being said, it's like, what's going to happen? When is it going to happen? Um, we just we got to wait and see. Um, let's see how this team, how they do this year. I think a, a lot of that could have an impact on it. Um, and sometimes I wonder, like, sometimes I wonder if his mind's been made up already. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I just think he is very, uh, he's very set on the way that he wants to do things. Um, obviously because like with him saying that the, the contract talks, they weren't doing that anymore once the season started. And he's continued to reiterate that, hey, no, I ain't talking about a contract no more. Season started, let's focus on football. Talked about it last week with the Jets, and then I remember leading up to this week, he's, they kept asking him about it. He said, no, it's Dolphins week. We're talking about the Dolphins. Um, so it's going to be something to see how everything unfolds this offseason. Um, but, yeah, it, it's certainly not just about money. I think money is obviously a huge factor. Uh, but legacy is definitely a huge part uh, of the whole thing. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie. Shout out to Graven.